Hi everyone. Today I am thrilled to be covering how to use the exciting and certainly long awaited new type of Megascans asset, trees. Trees are without a doubt one of the best foliage types to use and they certainly come with their challenges to scan and develop. Our scan teams have worked meticulously to document every nuance and characteristic a tree could have. From the base, trunk, branches, twigs and leaves, we've made an effort to ensure these trees adhere to realistic plant growth behaviors and natural forms of phyllotaxy. We've also considered how the tree develops throughout its life cycle. From a seedling to adulthood and seasonal changes from spring to winter, we've included all stages of life to allow you to create your scene with ease. In this breakdown, we're going to take a look at this black alder tree, which you can download for free from the Unreal Marketplace. We'll add the trees to Unreal and go through the various settings that will let you customize the look of the trees to fit any scene you're working with. Once you've acquired the tree assets and added them to your project, you'll see a black alder folder and a preset support folder which includes everything you'll need for the trees right out of the box. Inside the geometry folder, you'll be able to choose between the forest version of the tree or the field version. The field version, for example, are the various ages of the tree as if it received more direct sunlight as opposed to the forest version where they are fighting against other vegetation to get as many nutrients from the sun as possible from the top of the canopy. Let's drag and drop a few of these meshes onto our landscape. These assets come ready to use just like any other Megascans asset but we have additional controls where we can edit their behavior such as the subtle wind animation you see in motion. To begin editing the trees, we need to add the new global foliage actor to the scene. This is a custom blueprint widget created specifically for all Megascans foliage, and you'll find it here in the Megascans preset folder. Once selected, this widget allows us to control the different behaviors of all the foliage in your level dynamically. One thing to keep in mind with the widget icon are the wind indicators. The blue arrow tells you the direction the wind is coming from, and the windsock realistically reacts to the wind direction and wind speed based on your parameters, which you can edit here within the Actors Details panel. Wind noise allows you to alter the 3D generated noise to be smooth or more broken up. Wind strength changes how powerful the wind is from a calm breeze to hurricane force winds. Wind speed allows you to increase or decrease the wind animation speed. And wind tiling allows you to scale up or down the procedural noise that generates the wind. A lower scale will represent large, smooth swells of wind, while a higher scale will localize the wind pattern to make it feel more random and chaotic on a micro level. With the lighting section, you do not need to do much except select your scene's directional light from within the drop down menu. This is basically telling the shader which light source it will be utilizing when calculating certain instructions such as shade and shadow. The next section is probably my favorite, season and health. Season strength allows us to transform these trees from spring to summer and summer to fall. This color shift is a predefined value based on the biology of this specific tree species, but your creativity isn't limited here. Season brightness and season saturation allow you to explore your creative freedoms to stain these tree leaves with any variation of color combinations you can imagine. As you can see, you can come up with some pretty interesting outcomes. Health adjusts the tint of the leaves to resemble the tree's overall health. With this slider, it is more than just changing the color of the leaves. It is naturally shifting the amounts of nutrients the leaves receive. As you can see in this close-up, less and less nutrients are being supplied to the leaves from the outside in towards the stems, resulting with a crispy brown that truly feels near death. And lastly is color variation. These settings are off by default, so I'll cover these settings later on in the video, but at its essence, it allows you to quickly add variations to the trees in your scene by adjusting tint, tiling, and strength on a macro and micro noise scale. The Global Foliage Actor includes everything you will need right out of the box to easily tweak realistic adjustments and effects to all the foliage in your level. But we don't have to stop there. Let's dive a bit deeper into the makeup of these trees by looking at the new Foliage Master Material hierarchy for more parameters to control. 
Looking at the field number three tree variant, we can see that this tree is separated into different material instances. The trunk or bark material, twigs and leaves, decorations, which are items like knots, broken branches, or irregularities, and lastly, the imposter texture. These material instances are linked to this specific tree's master material instance within the matching folder in the content browser. And the master material instance is then linked to its parent, the foliage master material located in the presets folder. Focusing just on the field variant three, the settings you change in the master material instance will trickle down the line and affect the subsequent material instances, though there are some special settings only available in certain instances, which we'll cover. Let's begin with opening up the two-sided material instance, which are our controls for the leaves. One of the first things to keep in mind before you start is knowing what your use case is. Are you wanting simple, quick and easy levels of adjustment, or are you a seasoned Unreal user who wants to fine tune every detail for your cinematic grade shot? This usability options area is what drives the visibility of the remaining settings. It is also tied to the amount of instructions and quality of the asset shader, very similar to the engine's material quality levels that you can change on the fly. By default, these two control options are turned off, but you still have all the necessary controls to edit the asset if you want. However, if you are a beginner or need the shader to be less complex, then the basic controls option is for you. If you want to unlock all the settings available for increasing the quality of the shader and the quality of the scene, then the advanced controls option is for you, which is where I'll be keeping it for the remainder of this video. Much like the Megaskins materials, we have typical controls to manage the albedo, translucency, specular, roughness, normal map intensity, and opacity. All these settings are good to go right out of the box, but everything is here just in case you want to customize it a bit further. For example, most leaves are naturally rougher on their underside than their more glistening counterpart. Taking a look at this sapling, we can not only control how smooth the leaf's top side is, but the bottom side as well by utilizing the specular and roughness controls. This is most practical to enable on saplings and seedlings or close-up shots where the camera or a player character will most likely be in close proximity to the foliage. We can even alter the perceived light that passes through the leaves by adjusting its translucency controls. For example, we can change the color of the translucency to be more of a red haze, as if the biology of the plant was altered in some way. Next, we have seasons. This is much like the seasons with the global foliage actor, but this gives us even more control over this specific tree on an instance level of detail. We can certainly go wild with the various options here, and I'm sure some of you will utilize this extra level of tinting for the right shot or even an otherworldly landscape. But let me take your attention down here to the winter option. Yes, these assets come with an option to remove all greenery on this deciduous tree and expose just the bare branches and twigs to resemble winter conditions. Quite handy when setting up a dreary scene. Another parameter to open up more possibilities is light influence. This allows you to shift the surface and subsurface colors of the outermost leaves of the tree's shape based on vertex data and translucency masking. With these parameters, you can simulate lighter and younger leaf growth of your tree since sunlight hits those leaves first, or simply shift to any color you can imagine. Our tree bark is looking good by default, but let's see if we can sharpen it up a little. Opening up the material instance for the bark and navigate down to the bark detailer parameter. Increasing this will add some tinting to the occluded areas of the bark texture, giving it more contrast we need to make it pop out as if aged. Decreasing this parameter will resemble younger bark. There, that should do it. Remember that color variation section in the global foliage actor from earlier? Well, here within the material instance for these leaves is where we can enable or disable this effect. And to visualize these parameters, we're going to need a lot more trees. I have a variety of trees selected to paint on our landscape using the foliage painter tool. I already have their brush densities preset, and I've ensured that each of these tree meshes have the color variation parameter in their respective leaf shaders turned on. After painting some trees on our landscape, let's go overhead to get a good vantage point of our foliage. 
With the global foliage actor selected, we can now adjust the micro or macro projection of our noise map that is guiding the tinting of the trees, as well as varying the colors of the effect to truly randomize our forest, making it feel more realistic and believable to nature. Since we have a plethora of trees in our view, I'd like to point out that more than half of these trees in this view are actually imposters, the last stage to the LOD chain. Optimizing the trees is a task our team has spent a great deal of time perfecting. Whether it is for a low budget project, video game, or for filmmakers to create highly realistic cinematic experiences, these assets are ready to use right from the get-go, supporting a wide range of hardware. Each asset comes with a predefined set of sophisticated LODs and distances, but you are free to adjust these as needed set your own minimum LOD, or even specify which ones you want to use or eliminate. The last LOD in the chain, however, is the real-time imposter. These trees utilize the octahedral imposter tool, which captures the last geometric tree mesh in the LOD chain from a variety of angles and stores each view in a grid to a single baked albedo map and normal map. Then, depending on your camera angle to the imposter, the material shader will interpolate between the various angles to display the most optimal version of the imposter. As a result, the imposter truly blends in with the other static meshes, helping the scene not only feel more natural, but also incredibly optimized. And speaking of textures, these new Megascan tree assets come pre-shipped with 8K textures. But depending on certain tree variations, we've gone ahead and down some of these in Unreal to 4K. However, you can freely adjust these resolutions on your own to fit whatever needs you may have. Another major stride we took to optimize these assets for various industries is how these trees react to the wind system. You've probably noticed by now in the content browser that there are two subfolders of tree meshes, the pivot painter tree models and the simple wind tree models. These models are largely identical and to the naked eye, you wouldn't notice any difference to them if they were blended together. What separates these two is mostly based on your use case. For lower end applications or hardware, you'll probably want to stick with these simple wind systems. However, if you want the best possible wind system for high end projects such as cinematic sequences, then you'll want to choose the Pivot Painter system. As you can see, it is hard to distinguish between the two and the difference is mostly to do with how the branches and leaves interact with the wind. The simple wind system responds with large groups of global wind noise, while the pivot painter system interacts with small, localized wind patterns amongst each leaf cluster within the material shader. This shader is dependent on the engine's material quality settings, so keep that in mind as well. And if you were curious, the imposter works with the system too, but at those distances, it likely isn't necessary to enable the wind. And for optimization purposes, I would also recommend using the Pivot Painter foliage for close-up meshes such as seedlings and saplings, as this system will be more noticeable to your camera or character model. Then, reserve these simple wind versions for the taller trees to help simplify and optimize your environment. Trees are currently in early access, and you can acquire it now on the Unreal Marketplace for free. Additionally, trees will become readily available to the Megascans library within Bridge once through the beta process. As we move forward, we will continue to improve the process for these assets. With your help by providing us feedback, we can ensure this development grows continually so we can bring you the content and workflows you desire. It's been our goal to scan and produce the highest quality trees to the Megascans library. With this introduction to trees, how to use the new global foliage actor, breaking down the master material parameters, and steps we've taken to optimize these assets for any industry or use case. I hope this video has helped you get up and running with this amazing new content. For more information about these trees and gaining access to the alpha content, please visit the blog link in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.